17-year-old high school senior in Los Angeles is taking a bold and unprecedented step, suing her school district, but not over grades or the right to play a particular sport. She's suing over milk. Specifically, Marielle Williamson says her First Amendment rights are being trampled because she's barred from promoting plant-based milk alternatives to those little cartons of dairy milk that are served in every school lunch. And the USDA, she says, is very much to blame. She's here today to talk about this lawsuit, the first of its kind lawsuit, and she's joined by attorney Deborah Press from the Physicians Committee. With that, we welcome both of you to the show. Thank you both so much for making the time tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. What an incredible, extraordinary step, Mario. Let's start with you. First of all, what exactly happened here to lead us to the point where you're filing a lawsuit against the USDA, against the school district, and your principal, among others? Well, essentially, I was seeking to hold a tabling event, a day of action with some games, some raffles, some prizes, just to kind of educate students on plant-based milk and the issues associated with dairy milk. And I was told by my principal, who was following a guideline, that um, I could only hold this event if I also had pro-dairy information as well. And that's why I, I believe that that's wrong. And that's why we're going forward with this lawsuit. You could only hold the event if you had pro dairy information. So I'm assuming then, like you, what what did you envision with the event in the first place? Were you just going to say, "Hey, you know, this is why I choose not to consume dairy"? It was more like educating my peers on what the dairy industry is essentially trying to hide in schools. We have so much information constantly pushed onto us on the benefits of cow's milk. Students are constantly encouraged to choose cow's milk over even water. And I wanted to kind of counter that to show a different perspective from a student who had catered some projects to researching milk and plant-based milk. And so I wanted to talk about the environmental impact, the uh, equity, social impact, the ethical impact, and the health impact of dairy and plant-based milk. Well, let me ask you this before we jump over to Deborah. Um, you say that there's already so much promotion of traditional dairy milk in the school. As a matter of fact, one of the quotes that you gave in the press release that I received about the lawsuit was that uh, the school was riddled with pro-dairy posters, did this kind of catch you off guard because there already was such a tremendous amount of promotion of traditional milk? Uh, yeah, I said riddled with pro-dairy information, um, referencing how, you know, in health class, we're taught about the benefits of cow's milk. There are posters in our health class. Um, there are posters in my cafeteria, the morning announcements. Most of the announcements at the end, they say we have got milk and, you know, on our cafeteria menus, there's got milk. It's just constantly pushed onto us. What have your classmates said about this? I'm curious. I can't imagine that you're the only one in your school who is eating an exclusively plant based diet. Yeah, my peers, a lot of my peers aren't plant based but they don't drink cow's milk. They prefer drinking plant milk. And they have expressed to me that they find it odd that this one product is highlighted even more than vegetables in our cafeteria, in our lunch line and around in posters, like I said. All right, Deborah, I want to shift over to you here. This is really kind of interesting to me. This law that is being interpreted by the USDA to say that it must be dairy milk, is that really accurate? And I'll tell you why I'm asking that, because the law to me reads that any school that participates in the school lunch program, I'm reading verbatim here, any school that participates in the school lunch program shall not directly or indirectly restrict the sale or marketing of fluid milk products by the school or by a person approved by the school at any time or any place. It says milk. 
does not specifically say dairy milk here. So is this law specifically for dairy milk? It is actually, you know, fluid milk is defined elsewhere in the, in the school meal program uh, laws and regulations to mean cow's milk. So this law is specifically targeting the protection of dairy milk in the dairy industry. No other commodity in the school food program gets this kind of protection. It, it's a law that actually um, prevents anyone at any time um, at a school event on or off school property from saying anything that might restrict the sale or marketing of milk. And we have um, records from USDA email correspondence with representatives of the dairy lobby showing that they actually monitor schools for compliance with this law. We have several email chains from um, between 2015 and 2019 showing that the USDA is hearing from dairy representatives with complaints about milk or about water rather being prioritized over milk, about posters in the lunch line that might um, tell a student not to waste the milk if they don't want it. Milk happens to be the most wasted commodity um, in the school food uh, program by volume. So even a poster that says, don't take the milk if you're not gonna drink it has been brought to the attention of USDA um, as a violation of this law. So um, it's this in insane protection that the dairy industry gets that no other commodity gets. And we believe it's an unconstitutional law. So let me just make sure that we're understanding this correctly. If we were talking about offering a veggie burger or a veggie dog, as opposed to a traditional hamburger or hot dog, we would not be having this debate. Am I correct in saying that? A veggie dog, a veggie burger, or any other food, you know, any other food in the program. If you said, don't take the, uh, I don't know, don't take the the French fries, you know, if you're not going to eat them. No, no other food has this protection. And this is strictly for dairy and for dairy milk rather. And milk is also a strange, um, it also has a strange status in that it is required to be offered at every school meal. No other specific food besides dairy milk is required to be offered at every school meal. Um, so, you know, the way we see it, dairy milk is, um, the, you, the dairy industry is using students as a captive audience for this product that they don't really want. They don't want to drink it, but because it's written into law, the dairy industry is using every opportunity to voice milk on students through marketing, through posters, through promotions, and by stifling student speech. Here's the interesting thing. Let's kind of wrap things up here with some statistics here. 95% of Asian Americans cannot digest lactose. Same thing for 60 to 80% of the African American population, 80 to 100% of the American Indian population and up to 80% of the Hispanic population. And oh, by the way, 75% of students in the Los Angeles Unified School District happen to be of Hispanic descent. So to me, Deborah, I can see where some people might be concerned that this milk, which is detrimental to so many people's health, is being offered by law with every single meal. So I mean, <laughs> help me understand that one, please. Well, what what you're observing is the heavy subsidization of milk uh, of the dairy industry by USDA. It's not a physiologically or culturally appropriate food for such a huge percentage of students, um, but it still holds this um, elevated position in the program to the point where it's being forced on students. I mean, this sends the message to our students that these federal programs just aren't for them. And we're trying to change that. We're trying to make milk, we're, we're trying to knock milk off the, off the pedestal in the school food programs and make sure that students can drink whatever beverage is physically and culturally appropriate for them, whether that be um, a plant-based milk or water. Uh, we just don't think that we need to be peddling milk to students who don't want it and 
really shouldn't be drinking it. All right, two more quick ones here. Also, um, I know, how difficult is it for a student to get a non-dairy alternative served to them during lunch? I know that by law, they must do it. Um, but a couple of things there in that law, number one, that non-dairy alternative must be proven to be nutritionally equivalent or superior to traditional cow's milk. Um, and then two, they're going to need to have essentially a doctor's note enabled to get it. Those are two pretty high bars that a person needs to clear in order to get this alternative, it seems, Deborah. So yeah, the, the, the standards for getting a plant-based alternative are very confusing. And Marielle and many of other many other students have told us that their cafeterias, frankly, aren't understanding them and are misinterpreting them. And that is completely understandable because USDA makes them very confusing. So if you have a disability and a doctor's note saying as much, your school has to give you an alternative to milk and they have to pay for it. You, it. It will be part of the reimbursable meal. Short of having a doctor's note or a disability, the school can, but doesn't have to give you a plant-based alternative to milk uh, if you have a note from a parent. Hmm. So there are these different tiers of, of um, I guess, seriousness of severity that the USDA has in place for getting, getting plant-based milk, different levels of hurdles. If you just don't want to drink milk because it's um, an ethical problem, or if you don't have the time or resources to go to the doctor and get a note, you don't, you don't necessarily get an alternative to dairy milk in school. Uh, but I, wouldn't one be able to argue that lactose intolerance is in fact uh, a, like a, a disability in some way? I mean, it seems to me that that would be easy for someone to say, well, yeah, here's my disability. This is why I shouldn't be drinking that. And with such a wide swath of individuals falling into the lactose intolerant category, um, it seems to me and I really shouldn't be pontificating here, but it seems to me to make sense that um, that bar should be a lot lower for people to clear in order to get that non-dairy alternative. Um, you're exactly I mean, right. I mean, yeah. you're, and, and in fact, buried in a guidance document, USDA does say that lactose intolerance is considered a disability under the, um, the ADA. So that's that that's in there it's not very well known and i know even mario has told me that her cafeteria manager is unaware of that so it's it's just not well communicated and to to um either parents or to cafeteria managers and, and frankly you shouldn't have to say you have a disability to not drink milk most people who can't digest lactose would not consider themselves disabled it creates a stigma i think it's very strange it's just bizarre that you would have to say you have a disability to get a milk alternative. So this is something that we're trying to change. A, a piece of legislation is being reintroduced. And that is also going to try to lower the hurdles for students to get a plant-based milk um, by allowing them to get um, a milk alternative with just a parent's note, not a doctor's note, um, and also authorizing schools to give a plant-based alternative without any note at all. Deborah, one more for you. And then Marielle, uh, a final one for you as well. Deborah, where do things stand with the lawsuit currently? Has the USDA or the school district responded yet? Not yet. We just filed the lawsuit uh, two days ago. So we haven't, it's, it's too soon for any response, but I suspect we'll be hearing from them in, in a, in short time. And we look forward to hearing that response. And Marielle, my final question for you is this. You're a senior. As it stands now, we record this. There's only a, probably just a few weeks of school left before you're off to college. Um, why, why even bother with so few school days remaining? Because this is really important. Thousands of students rely on the National School Lunch Program. They're not getting the full value of their meal. And... There are so many issues associated with dairy. So many world issues intersect with it that it, it's it's just it's too important to just not talk about, not do something about. And 
I don't want students after me or younger than me in following years to be restricted by this kind of law if they want to voice their opinion on something. Well, you are truly a trailblazer. There is no doubt about that. Maria Williamson and Deborah Press, both thank you so very much for your time tonight. Both thank you so very much for your time tonight. Thank you, thank you Chuck. If your health IQ is a couple of points higher than it was a few minutes ago, go ahead and like this video or subscribe to the YouTube channel. And to take it even higher, head over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your favorite shows. Look for the exam room by the Physicians Committee. Hit the subscribe button there as well and help to make your world a healthier place.